And I was completely finished. And I said to Meg, my partner, like, I've had enough, I want to quit. Hello, welcome to Camping Chair Chats, episode one, a new series that I'm going to be hosting right here on my YouTube channel. So what is Camping Chair Chats? Well, it's pretty much what it says on the tin. We're sat in some camping chairs and we're having a chat, but it's more than that. What I really want this series to be is a space to tell the stories about the people in the running community. The people that are part of the running world, whether they're athletes, people that run a park run at the weekend, elite runners, coaches, officials, or people that make content about running. And I wanna share those stories with you guys. So who is the first guest of Camping Chair Chats? Well, you should know by now from the title. Yes, it's Ben Felton, better known as Ben is Running. Ben started making running YouTube videos just over a year and a half ago after going down to his local park run and absolutely loving the community down there. Now he's knocking on the door of the sub elite and running in those elite fields in half marathons up and down the country. It was great to chat to Ben and to get to know him a little bit better whilst we sat in a random ploughed field in the middle of Essex. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, camping chairs, chats. Camping chairs? Camping chair chats. Camping chair chat. All right, I'll do that again. <laughs> All right, camping chair chats, episode Ooh. one. Joined by the one and only Ben is running today. Thanks for joining us oh, on this uh, this beautiful Sunday evening on this ploughed field uh, yeah. in your hometown. How strange. I know. Yeah, love it. It's fantastic. So we've travelled to Ben's hometown. We are in Chelmsford. Yeah, roughly, roughly. the Chelmsford area. Yeah, okay. in a little village on the outside. Nice little countryside, as you can see. Um, these are my running routes. We are literally sat right next to my tempo loop. So yeah, I feel right at home in this field on a lovely sunny Sunday evening. Right, we're going to dive in with some quick fire, get okay. things heated up. So just whatever comes to you first. And I will warn you that these sort of increase in um, importance as we go through. Okay. So your answer matters more as we get to the uh, the tail end of these. And um, oh God, I feel like I'm being yeah, judged. You will be judged. OK, I'll, I'll leave cool. it there. <laughs> Kick us off then. Uh, tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. Fair enough. Uh, Favourite biscuit? Favourite biscuit. Chocolate digestive. OK, solid, solid. Track, road, <coughs> excuse me. Track, road, cross country or trails? Road. Road? Yeah, Solid. definitely road. And uh, last but not least, uh, K's or miles? K's. All right, we're done. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> to each their own, it's, it's fine. We'll just gloss over that. Mm. Let's, uh, let's take things back a bit. I know how you got into running, um, but for those that are watching who don't, do you want to maybe give a little bit of a backstory, a little bit of a story about how that yeah, all, sure. all sort of yeah started for you? So me and my girlfriend Meg moved to Sweden um, after university. She got a job. I just went along for the ride. Um, <laughs> had, I think, about minus a thousand pounds in my bank account um, and ended up working as a chef. That's a long story. But when I moved to Stockholm, um, I decided to join a local running club just to, as a way of meeting new people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I really caught the buzz the running club sort of met twice a week and then I found myself running like almost every day joined another um, running club an athletics club um, so I was part of two clubs um, and yeah I just caught the buzz for it in a big way when when we moved to Sweden I love that you sort of just fell into it as a way to I guess socialize or keep fit or a bit yeah. of both yeah mainly just the social side of things I always liked sort of sports and exercise but I was never really any good at anything but I'd, I'd give everything a good go if you know what I mean yeah okay that's that's cool and I was gonna say did you do any other sort of sports as a kid did you ever sort of think about running or were you into like any yeah. other sort of sport specifically um, so the main sport I played was football um, as a kid then I went to university and like a typical um, teenage boy got into the gym and I spent pretty much every day in the gym um, and then one day I decided, oh, I'll do a park run and realised that I actually enjoyed the running side of things a lot more than just throwing around weights in the, in the gym. Um, and then, yeah, went along to park run every week, got the buzz um, and Love then it. decided I'm going to be a runner. And then never, never lost the buzz, I guess. Never lost the buzz. And no. here we are today. Exactly. Sat in there a you go. lovely field. Love that. You already had a YouTube channel. Yes. How did that all start? Um... Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I used to have a YouTube channel called Ben Felton Vlogs. Okay. Um, but it was very, very small, maybe three or four hundred subscribers. And I just used to document my holidays, my experiences at university. Um, I think my first video was a, a university night out. 
um, with my uh, the bo- the boys that I just met on our on my course, mm-hmm. um, and then yeah, just sort of grew from there. I think in lockdown uh, in 2019, 2020, um, I started sort of the shift towards making running content, and that's when my channel sort of blew up a little bit. People that didn't know me started watching my videos. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I used to make vlogs and just travel stuff, but mainly just for my own sort of personal viewing and just to look back at memories and stuff like that yeah so it was more to sort of like just document what was going on and just to like sort of create something I guess yeah yeah I've always nice. enjoyed like photography and video and just having a camera and filming stuff just yeah. seemed kind of pretty natural to me yeah I did a nice little scroll back to sort of five years oh, ago because no. I guess that you've sort of just changed the name of your channel yes, and all yeah. that is still there oh, yeah. so, all the uh, content is still there probably should, yeah if you haven't um, checked it out there's a great um, milk challenge video oh, that's a good um, one. Good chicken nugget of, challenge yeah it's all on there chicken so <laughs> just scroll all the way down to the bottom and um, yeah. hey Enjoy. Those, those views will keep going yeah up. yeah so views what, views, hey? what made you decide to turn your channel into a running channel and I guess sort of dedicate your channel to running yeah um i think it was uh the covid lockdown mm-hmm. um i was being paid of furloughed at the time from my chefing job and i was running a lot um and it just i just thought oh why not start filming some of this um and film my sort of training the progress i was making in my own running journey and hopefully like inspire other people to get into running go along to their local park runs and get involved in the community that i'd sort of grown into um and love so much and it just it just came pretty naturally. Yeah. Um, and it's just gone from there. You've gone from strength to strength. You started doing the running videos about a year and a half ago. Yeah, probably. Yeah? Yeah. And now that's your job. Yeah, crazy. YouTube is your job. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy yeah. to most people, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people watching your channel probably, maybe they run, maybe they don't. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just like watching someone else run. Yeah. But most of them that work probably do a nine to five at a desk or perhaps they've got a trade or they're teaching, whatever. Something that you're like, okay, I kind of know what that entails. Yeah. What does being a full time YouTuber actually entail? Like what does your week look like? What is your day to day? How does that even work? Yeah, so the majority of my time is spent doing my training. So a, the YouTube became almost uh, a means to be, for me to be able to train like an elite athlete. Um, so I typically run twice a day, so that takes up, I don't know, maybe one, two hours of my day. Um, and on those runs, I'll document, I'll make videos about the runs, about the workouts. So then when I'm not running, I'm based at home, I'll be editing, making thumbnails, filming content, answering emails, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's actually, it's actually pretty pretty busy um a lot of people think oh you don't you don't work you just sit at home and just film a couple videos film a couple of videos but yeah there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that people people don't see so for example a, a video that i'll post maybe a 10 minute video will take me four or five hours to to edit mm-hmm. so that's like almost like a day's work yeah um and then there's going to events with brands and stuff which i'm doing more and more of and really enjoying and um, getting to go all around the world and yeah, have an amazing time basically. So it's pretty surreal. Um, I'm only just sort of starting out in the YouTube scene. Obviously, I've only been doing it for like a year, two years now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm still f- figuring out the the day to day and tr- just trying to keep consistent with with uploading and yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's amazing. You're you're basically in charge, I guess, in a yeah. way of like, it's like being self-employed. Like yeah. I don't know. I'm like a plumber, but I make YouTube videos. Exactly. And, you know, if you wanted to go, I don't know, run from Land's End to John O'Groats in a few weeks' time, you could yeah. d- you could do that and exactly. film it and, and you'd get paid for it. Yeah. Which is awesome. On that, I guess, YouTube is your day-to-day. Yeah. What's the best part of being a YouTuber? Best part? Probably the freedom to be able to do whatever you want, when you want. Obviously, you have full control control over when you want to film Mm -hmm. so I can come up with an idea in the morning and then just just go out and and do it and have fun um yeah I think that's probably the main thing and I can also um, I'm quite family orientated as well so it's nice to be able to just do stuff with family whenever I want to so for example my sister will have a Wednesday off and she'll say oh do you want to go out for brunch yeah and I'll be like yeah I can I, I can just like move my work around that um and it's really nice to be flexible and just basically have a really good life, work-life balance, which mm-hmm. is also something I learned from living in Sweden. Um, when we moved back here, I was like, I don't want to just spend all my work, all the week working just for the weekends. Yeah. So as soon as I saw there was an opportunity to do YouTube more full-time, I was like, I've got to, got to give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. You can sort of 
I guess, chop and change your schedule. Not at the drop of a hat, but like kind of if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. You can just sort of fit around your life. Yeah. Which is, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And yeah. I'm so privileged to, to do what I do. Yeah, um, absolutely. And it's funny sort of hearing you say, you know, when that happens and it comes up, you've got to do something on the weekend that you've got to work. Does it feel like work or does that feel a little bit strange that you can say that? Because to me, yeah. I, I don't know, I sort of, like you say, it's a super privileged position to be in. Yeah. Um, but I guess when you really enjoy something, does it almost not feel like work? Yeah, it nev never really feels like work, especially when I'm out filming videos or just going for my runs in the morning. I'm never thinking, oh, I'm going out to, to work because, yeah, I guess this the cliche thing when, like, I can't remember what the saying is now, but basically if you enjoy your work, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. Um, and I definitely feel that with running. I've found, like, what I love to do. And if filming that and documenting it is a, a way of, like, making it a lifestyle and paying the bills, then, yeah, that's amazing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, why not? On that, I guess, and on sort of your YouTube, aspire to run, run to inspire. Yeah. Where did that come from? Why, what made you think of that? And sort of what does it mean to you? Because you sort of sign your videos off with that. Yeah. Um, I guess it's maybe a mantra. Yeah, what's the sort of yeah. backstory behind it? Um, it's just something I almost like would say to myself so for me to aspire to run means I want to be the best version of myself as a runner so I want to improve I want to PB I want to reach levels that I've not reached before mm -hmm. and then with the YouTube side of things and like creating a community it like inspires other people to to get involved I love that I didn't I didn't realize the that was where the sort of aspire to run bit came yeah. from I've I guess you can kind of put two and two together and think you know run to inspire that that's there um yeah. but it's great i guess it sounds like it almost sort of keeps you accountable yeah, at the same definitely. time as well yeah it was as much for me as it was a way, a way of just signing out my videos with something that was um continuous i love that cool okay what is your favorite race that you've done so far and is that also representative of your favorite distance Yes, so my favourite race would be the Copenhagen Marathon, my mm -hmm. first marathon. I think for a lot of runners out there, if you've ever run your first marathon, it's like incredibly special. The sense of like achievement you get when you cross the line is yeah something I've never experienced before. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love the marathon distance. It probably would, I reckon the half marathon at the moment is probably slightly favoured in terms of um, just being able to to run to a high standard just because mm -hmm. I feel like I've done it a lot more than I have the marathon but moving forward I I want to be a marathon runner I don't want to sort of I obviously like 5k's half marathons but yeah marathons is is my is my bread and butter I think all right do you have a bucket list race bucket list race um not really, to be honest with you. Obviously, I'd love to do the the world major marathons. Mm -hmm. um, people always say, "Oh, would you love to do? Would you? Are you going to do London?" And I don't know. London hasn't like super attracted me to it yet. Okay. I do want to do it, and I think I want to be in like the best shape possible. So maybe that's why I'm putting it off because I want it to be like super special. I want it yeah. to to give it a real good go. Have um, you been to watch London before? I haven't. I'm going this okay. year, so. Maybe that'll be it. Hopefully that'll be it, yeah. <laughs> and also it's been really difficult to get into London. I think I've tried like about five times through the ballot and yeah. wasn't successful. So I think maybe that put me off a little bit. Yeah, it's super competitive um, to get into. Yeah. I think um, I've been to watch it like three or four times just from yeah. seeing people do it. And that was enough for me to be like, I'm going to do it next year. And yeah. then never did. So yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe that'll be something that yeah, makes you want to do it's it. It's definitely on the bucket list. Um, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily like the, the race that I have to do. Yeah. Um, I don't really have have a bucket this race. Just yet. lots of marathons. Yeah, lots of marathons. Go travel as much of the world as possible and race in as many countries as possible. Yeah, I love that. It's a good excuse to travel. So you don't have a bucket list race? No, not necessarily. Copenhagen Marathon was your favourite race. Yeah. I guess that sort of represents the running high, the highest sort of point that you've yeah. had. Has there been a lowest point and, and what would that be? Yeah, definitely. So... I signed up to do an ultra marathon. Um, wow. I think I was, I'd been a runner or training for about a year, and I thought, oh yeah, let's do a 50 kilometer ultra marathon. Which ultra marathons isn't too far. I thought I'd be okay. Um, I put in like some really good training, um, and then on the day it just just went terribly. After about 20 kilometers, um, I had cramping, and yeah, it was a really not very enjoyable experience. Um, I ended up getting quite emotional. I made a video on it. Um, and yeah, it was a real low point. You put all these months, well, not too many months, but a few months of training into it. And then on the day it didn't go well. It just felt like 
complete waste of time and yeah it's really yeah it's a definite low point um and you get that with running like some days you have good races some days you have bad races and there's not necessarily not necessarily like reason behind it it's just Sunday isn't your day yeah um, and that was quite a bitter pill to swallow especially for something that I was hoping was going to be such a enjoyable sort of event yeah so is that written off ultras for the future then no I definitely I feel like I've got like unfinished business with it okay um, that's a good way to look at it I yeah think. yeah I definitely want to do the it was called the Stour Valley Path 50k so it was all on trail um following like a um just a path that goes through Suffolk um so I'd definitely like to do that again one day and probably when I'm in my like I don't know late 30s 40s I can see myself doing some crazy comrades stuff. yeah that sort of stuff UTMB love, love to give that a go um but I think for now the cap is is going to be at the marathon distance okay and stick to the roads as well trail running is completely different I have so much respect for people that do ultras and trails mm. uh and I get I guess that you signed up for that before doing a marathon yeah yeah what was the, the thought process there? I have no idea. <laughs> Looking back, it was super naive and, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to do it and thought, yeah, I can do that. I'm, why not? Perhaps the um, the experience, and obviously you said it was tough, yeah. but also the sort of the pain that you would have had to go through past the marathon distance mm. was quite good in a way to sort of prepare you for the marathon. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because there was a aid station at 42 kilometres, so a marathon distance, so eight kilometres to go. And I walked into this aid station. I was completely finished. And I said to Meg, my partner, like, I've had enough. I want to quit. Um, and I just sat down in, like, a camping chair. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, basically said I was done. And the the volunteers at the aid station were like, oh, you can't you can't give up here. Like, you've run 42 kilometres. You've got eight, eight left. You can just finish this off. And I was like, yeah, maybe I can get up and finish this and I think my little sister walked the last 8k with me oh, wow. which was super sweet of her um, and I finished it and it was yeah really good to to get it done yeah. um, but obviously not the way I saw it going in my head yeah unfinished business you'll be back yeah definitely will you just did the Copenhagen half yep that was your last sort of big race yep what's next what's the next sort next of race will six be months Valencia marathon okay which I believe you're doing as well right or no you've I'm not anymore, you're not no. anymore. <laughs> you were originally not. Gonna I'm gonna be, be watching it. that with FOMO but yeah yeah, yeah so that would be my next um big challenge um I'm starting my 10 week training block tomorrow mm -hmm. um so I'm having a day a day off today my last little day off for probably quite a long time I don't tend to have many days off in my training I prefer just to do like super easy like recovery jogs um, so yeah, that would be my next big goal, and I'm going to go for a pretty ambitious time as well. Okay. Um, my first marathon was 2:28, and I want to go for 2:20, which is amazing. It's pretty brave, but um, yeah, I'm going to train full as send. if I'm a, a 2:20 marathoner, and yeah, full send it. And if I end up at 2:24, 2:25, then Still a PB. I'll be I'll be happy. Yeah. If you don't try, you just you just don't know. Exactly. And yeah. if it doesn't happen this time around, I'm sure that will give you sort of some sort of information for the next time yeah, right yeah yeah for sure okay so that's the next one in the sort of near future yeah what's the big goal in the next one year and the next 5 years oh that's a good one i don't tend to think that far ahead okay i'm very much like oh what's my next race i'm going to do that one and then just try and improve on my previous time and just see where it where it takes me um but yeah i'd love to be at a super high standard for the marathon eventually so mm -hmm. like I'd love to be like in the elite men category in, at London which is like 218 mm -hmm. um so I'd love to see myself at that sort of time eventually yeah but I'm super new to running as well I've only been running for like three years so I'm I don't like to rush it and just take each Absolutely. race as it comes I think I mean you can't rush it but like it sounds like by not thinking too far ahead you're just like I'll just do the next one and then like yeah. keep chipping away which yeah. I think is probably a pretty good approach to have yeah so that's sort of what's next for running yep and the answer to this question might be the same but i'm interested to ask it in case it's not yeah what's next for the youtube it's just much of the same i think mm -hmm. yeah just keep the journey going keep documenting what i'm doing um i'd love to make more content that encourages more people to get into the sport um and also the sort of elite side of things there's a lot of elite runners out there that nobody really knows their their stories so mm -hmm. i'd love to work on projects like this which can hopefully bring light to that and sort of bridge the gap between your park runner which is where i started off at yeah and eventually like hopefully myself becoming an elite athlete um and i'd love to work at some way of of bridging the gap between the two to make 
yeah, to almost encourage more people to support running, not only like compete and do their own running journeys, but to like invest in other people as well and, and follow along with them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a great answer. Just sort of bring people with you, I yeah. suppose, and yeah. keep keep doing what you're doing. It's what it's what your mantra says, I guess. Yeah. Try to inspire people yeah. along the way. And, you know, the fact that you started off at a park run and you're now sat here saying, you know, I'm shooting for the elite start at London. Yeah. Like, that's pretty inspiring. Yeah. So if there are people out there watching that are doing park runs and, you know, you're afraid of setting those goals, 100% do it. Mm. Set some scary goals because... You never know what happened. Exactly. All right. Signing off then. What is running to you in three words? In three words. Oh, that is a difficult one. Um, freedom. Okay. Um, community. And life. Basically, it's become my life, which is crazy to think. Freedom, community, life. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. So that sums it up. First camping chair chats. Thank you so much, Ben, for being Thank the you. first guest. Yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about Ben is running, the guy behind the <laughs> channel. And yeah, come back next time and see who we have next. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the first episode of Camping Chair Chats. I really hope you enjoyed getting to know Ben a little bit better. We'll link his socials down here once again. And if there's someone that you have in mind that you'd love to sit down in a camping chair with me and have a little chat, stick them in the comments section below and we'll see if we can make it happen. That's all from me for now. Love the grind. See you later. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm so cold. I'm trying yeah, not, you're shivering. Trying not Should we do a lap? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just spilled water all over me as well. Good job, oh. Ben. <laughs>